In this lesson, I'll be looking at periodic trends of oxides. So we've already looked at different oxides in the periodic table. And as you can see here, you've got your basic oxides, which are generally metals. You've got acidic oxides, which are mostly non-metals. You have a few amphoteric oxides, which means they can act as acids or bases, such as lead and zinc. And you have the noble gases, which don't form any oxide. Because they're already stable, they won't react. So, looking at some general trends over the periodic table. As the metallic character increases, which is moving to the left of the periodic table, the basic properties of an oxide will increase. Oxides of elements on the left-hand side of the periodic table are basic, and oxides of elements on the right-hand side will be acidic. But some can be amphoteric and some can be neutral. So there are a few exceptions, but in general, if you think to the left, you think basic. If you think to the right, you think acidic. So some metallic oxides are amphoteric, as I said previously, for example, zinc oxide and lead oxide. And some non-metallic oxides are not soluble in water, and some are neutral. So there are a couple of exceptions. Now group eight elements do not form oxides, so they're the noble gases, they're unreactive. So the properties of the oxides of main groups, okay? So now I'm gonna be describing a few of the groups in the periodic table and a few of the oxides and how they react. So group four, our example is carbon dioxide. Now it has a covalent molecular, molecular structure because it's a non-metal. It's a gas at room temperature, as we all well should be aware, and it's essential as a source of carbon for photosynthesis by plants and trees. Now the rate of emission of CO2 and other greenhouse gases is increasing, and this is because of fossil fuel burning and deforestation, so it's quite bad for our environment. CO2 is soluble in water and it forms an acidic solution containing hydrogen carbonate or carbonic acid. So CO2 accounts, okay, so the production of carbonic acid accounts for the acidity of carbonated water or soft drinks as well. It reacts with hydroxide ions. So if you remember, hydroxide ions are OH minus to form carbonates and hydrogen carbonates in solution. A second example for group four, silicon oxide. It's a covalent network. It's a solid at room temperature, as you can see from the picture there. It's a lovely crystal of silicon oxide, or to be more specific, silicon dioxide, because it has two oxygen atoms. It's insoluble in water, but it forms a wide range of silicates with hydroxide ions. Again, OH minus. Now we move on to group five. The acidic nature of the oxides of group five decreases down the group, okay? So let's start by looking at nitrogen. And nitrogen forms acidic oxides. So some examples, nitrogen dioxide, dinitrogen trioxide, N2O3, which is weakly acidic, and dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5, which is strongly acidic. And the picture there is of London, and what you can see is a lot of smog, and that's due to these nitrogen oxides in the air. And nitrogen oxides have a covalent molecular structure, again. Now, NO2 is a serious atmospheric pollutant, as you can see in the picture again, leading to photochemical smog formation in cities. So certain cities, sometimes London, luckily not too many cities in Australia get too much smog, but if there isn't enough wind around, the smog can't be cleared out. So oxides of nitrogen are water soluble. N2O3 is the anhydride of nitrous acid, which is HNO2, a weak acid. 
Now, the word anhydride simply means that there's no hydrogen there. And there's also no water there. So if you have a look, HNO2 has a hydrogen, N2O3 doesn't. N2O5 is the anhydride of nitric acid, which is HNO3, a strong acid. Okay, so they only differ by one oxygen group, but they have a different name. Not by much though, but you do need to recognise that and don't get them confused. Now looking at phosphorus, again, the air, phosphorus has acidic oxides. Phosphorus 3 oxide is weakly, weakly acidic. Phosphorus 4 oxide, P4O10, is strongly acidic. And the picture there is of the Dead Sea. And what you can see is salts of various metals um, and non-metals, one of which is phosphorus. So when the water's evaporated, a lot of salt is deposited in the Dead Sea. These oxides are covalent molecular, and both oxides are water soluble. P2O3 is the anhydride of phosphorus acid, H3PO3, and P4O10 is the anhydride of phosphoric acid, H3PO4. So these are two different molecules, and they differ by the number of oxygen atoms. Okay. Now we move on to group 6, sulphur dioxide and sulphur trioxide. SO2 to start with, it's a gas at room temperature, as you, you can see in the picture, that's SO2 gas coming from a factory, and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it can also come off volcanic vents uh, and thermal baths and things like that and it undergoes covalent molecular bonding. Increases in atmospheric SO2 leads to acid rain, particularly in the northern hemisphere, which kills trees and forests, and also really affects certain buildings. So a lot of really old buildings in the northern hemisphere, unfortunately, are decaying because of this acid rain, which is not good for the environment. So SO2 has a low solubility in water, and forms sulfurous acid, H2SO3. And it reacts with hydroxide ions, OH- to form sulfites and hydrogen sulfites in solution. So looking now at sulfur trioxide, tri sulfur trioxide is a covalent molecular compound. And unlike SO2, it's a solid at room temperature. So its melting point is 62 degrees Celsius. And as you can see from the picture there, that's sulfur trioxide, a black solid. It dissolves in water to form sulfuric acid, H2SO4, which is quite a strong acid. SO3 reacts with hydroxide ions, which are OH- to form sulfates and hydrogen sulfates in solution. Now on to group seven. Here I've got a table of the physical properties as uh, so that we can recap all of them at once. All the oxides of group 7 are acidic, except for F2O, F2O okay, fluorine. So let's, let's look at the physical properties. Fluorine's a yellow gas. These, these properties are at room temperature. Chlorine's a green gas, very acrid green gas. You, you do not want to breathe chlorine gas. Uh, you may have smelt it before as a pool chemical. Bromine, bromine is a volatile brown liquid and iodine is a volatile purple solid, but it can be dissolved in water to help. Um, it can be used as an antibacterial agent. If you cut yourself or you have a wound, uh, you can use the brown iodine um, to help fix that up. So the oxides of chlorine are strong oxidants. Now ClO2 is used for bleaching in the paper industry and also as a germicide, okay, to to kill germs and microbes. It's also used as an improving agent for flour in baking, such as bread and croissants and uh, lovely breakfast things. And another oxide of chlorine, Cl2O7, dissolves in water to form a powerful oxidizing agent called perchloric acid, HClO4. And this is a very strong oxidizing agent. 
Uh, you do not want to get that on your skin or anywhere near you because it will hurt. It is a very painful, very smelly uh, compound, HClO4. So there are a few trends of the oxides. So we'll look at a few questions now. So question six, which of the following shows only neutral oxides? So we have a few options there. And to the untrained eye, they may all look the same because there's a lot of C's, a lot of O's and a lot of N's. But you really have to look specifically at how many of each there are so that you can get the right answer for this question. So let's have a look. Part A, CO, NO and NO2, they're all amphoteric oxides. So they can act as an acid or a base. Looking at part C, CO2, NO, N2O, these are all acidic oxides because they're non-metals. CO, N2O4 and NO2 are actually basic oxides. So those ones you actually do have to remember that they're basic, they're not acidic. So which ones are only neutral? Our answer is going to be part B. Carbon monoxide, nitrogen monoxide and dinitrogen oxide. So that's the answer for question six. Question seven now. Complete the following general rules. Oxides of non-metals, which are on the right hand side of the periodic table, are what oxides? If you remember, they're all acidic oxides, the majority. Some are neutral, but the general rule is that they're going to be acidic. And part B, oxides of metals are, and you kind of have a clue from part A, they're going to be basic oxides. Okay? So they're your general rules about non-metals and metals. So question eight, complete the key in the following periodic table to show which elements form acidic oxides, basic oxides, amphoteric oxides, and which do not form any oxides. So if you'll remember back to the start of the lesson, we had a picture of this periodic table. So if we can remember, we need to label A, B, C, and D with the different colors. So A, they're gonna form basic oxides because they are all on the left of the periodic table and they're metallic. Part B, the blue ones, these are the exception, exception to the rule. They are amphoteric, such as lead and zinc. Okay, what's part C, the green one? They're going to form acidic oxides because they're non-metals. And finally D, no oxides at all because these are the noble gases, they're unreactive. So they will not bond with oxygen. Now question nine, metals form basic oxides. Basic oxides will dissolve in water to form hydroxides. Complete the following equation to illustrate this. Magnesium oxide and water forms what? Luckily in the question, it's actually given us half the answer. It says it will dissolve to form hydroxides. So what we need to draw now is a hydroxide of magnesium. So there's our answer. Magnesium hydroxide will form and we were given that, so we were quite lucky in this question. So now we need to draw the formula for it, and the formula is MgOH in brackets 2. So two hydroxyl groups bonding to a magnesium. Okay, so that is question 9. Now question 10. Basic oxides react with acids to form water and a salt. Use an equation to show the reaction of basic magnesium oxide with hydrochloric acid. So what's happening? The question is telling us what's happening. So let's write it down in words. Magnesium oxide and hydrochloric acid will form water and magnesium chloride. Okay? Because it's told us that a salt will form and magnesium chloride is the salt. So now we write the equation. MgO plus 2HCl, magnesium oxide plus hydrochloric acid goes to magnesium chloride, aqueous, and water. So that's the equation for this question. So that wraps up periodic trends of oxides, and in the next lesson I'll be discussing more about Le Chatelier's principle. Mm -hmm.